Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. I can't believe we just pulled that off, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you might be wondering how I got up here. I threw an ender pearl before I put down the bone mill there. Just chopping down some spruce trees because I actually just wanted to show you that trick. I got that as a suggestion on uh, my five biggest myths video which we put out a couple of days if you didn't see that of course be sure to check it out there'll be a link down below for you uh, but basically there are some myths that come up time and time again and I just wanted to, to talk about them really and do a video about it and then someone left a comment saying the quickest way to the top of a tree is just to throw an ender pearl directly up before you bone mill it and I couldn't agree more that actually turned out to be really good and it means you can just dig all the way straight down without having to make a spiral staircase which although it's faster to do it's kind of annoying as well um, so you can see I've just been practicing that a little bit so I won't do it again because well actually I'll come back here and chop down a tree later on so you put four like this then you hit record, <laughs> you look upwards and then you start talking going, hello everyone, welcome back to another episode and then waha, you're on the top of the tree, amazing, really cool stuff. I'll come back and chop this one down later because I want to outline what we're doing in this video. We're going to be doing some redstone, I've already been doing building on the floor down below and I'm absolutely loving this project at the moment, I really am. I am enjoying building this uh, second floor down which I thought was going to be the tough one, the one that I would probably enjoy the least. <laughs> And uh, it turns out I'm liking it a lot. So, this floor, everything is usual as normal. Now we're going to drop down to the one down below. And, voila, look at that. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Orange and blue together. Great combination of colours right there. My favourite com uh, combination, actually. Blue orange, that's my favourite colour. Blue and orange. And that looks really good. And it ties into this room so well. Yes, and I've been doing a little bit of work around here. So over on this side, I noticed that this right here was back by one block. So I pulled that out. It's now the same as the other sides. And I've prepared this little room over here. So this is where our enchanting room is going to go. And then I noticed that we're right on top of the potion brewing area down below. So I was going to do this with redstone. And now it means that we're going to have limited amount of options for what we can actually do, which may prompt us to come up with some sort of new enchanting table design to fit in this room. So that's challenge number one. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I'm missing a block there. I do have one. That's good. Let's put that there now. And uh, challenge number two is to build a sorting system for these guys. I've got an idea for something that'll be uh, very simple. I've actually made like my own designs before and I know there's loads of them out there but I'm just going to design one quickly sort of off the cuff. I've got a good idea of what we can do using um, these corner rails and powering them to sort of turn them left and right. So that's right, I actually left that there, that's good. <laughs> um, somewhere down here we'll have like a little corridor where we just send them through one by one and they'll go into a little holding bay and then we can see what they are if they're a librarian, we keep them. If they're not, we crush them. And then we'll be able to take them out of there as well and bring them down to this area. So that's challenge number two in terms of redstone. And challenge number three, <laughs> three different redstone projects I want to get all done in one video, is going to actually be a lot less redstone-y because there'll be a few pistons and stuff like that in this room. Um, but the main thing is the aesthetics. We're going to design the room for all of these villages to go in. And that's pretty much it, isn't it? I also want to point out, like I did at the end of last episode, you shouldn't be breeding, you're all the way over here. I guess he's probably in range. Um, I want to point out that when you trade with these guys, they get healed. As you saw <laughs> on my villagers uh, video that I put out on the weekend, do you know Minecraft? That's something I discovered through modded Minecraft, actually. Because when you look at a villager in modded Minecraft on the Assuminati mod pack, it tells you how much health it has. And I traded with one and saw that its health went up. So that's how I found out about that. But yes, these guys have got hurt in the process of moving them around. You know, when they're in minecarts, sometimes they clip into a block and take damage. Just remember, if you're working with villagers, once you start trading with them, they're going to heal. So that's a cool little fact. And they're the three things that I want to do. <laughs> um, so let me know what you think of how this is coming along, of course, down there in the comments. Especially this bit over here. I really, really love how this looks. And I think what I might do is emulate this on the opposite side as well. So although we've got limited space to work with over here, we'll have a similar corridor with lots more water because it's a little bit longer. And I'll just have to move some of these tracks around. And that reminds me, actually, this one over here, um, it went right on top of our little room down below. And this will be the floor of the area above. So it's a real squeeze here in the base. Everything is just about fitting in to the area. But that's part of the challenge and that's a lot of the fun. So anyway, first things first. We've got three sort of challenges. And the first one that I want to do is the villager sorter. 
Alright, you can say what you want about this. I'm not particularly a fan of it either. <laughs> Uh, I feel like this room is actually a little bit plain and this thing just sort of sits in the middle looking a bit odd so let me explain exactly what's going on here. I wanted to do something with redstone and then this whole kind of diagonal approach thing came into mind. I wanted it to look even as you walk up to it like this uh, whereas normally what you see is people put bookshelves around like so. So you walk into this bit right here and that kind of makes it convenient for redstone to power and unpower the uh, bookshelves around in a row. So I was going to have to do something where we had some bookshelves down at this level, some at that level right there. I also ended up miscalculating um, the height of the room because I, I did this on um, play.sumavoid.com beforehand. I tend to do that a lot when I need to do a bit of redstone brainstorming. And, uh, and yeah, and now the extra bookshelves up there look really odd. And I just don't know how I think or feel about it. If any of you want to suggest something, like tweet me a design, something cool with a diagonal approach where we can use redstone, then feel free to do so because this probably won't stay. Um, I also think the interface is a little bit ugly as well. I thought it'd be nice to find some clever little tricks using perhaps, perhaps block updates or something else that you could interact with other than um, these levers right here. You can also see cobble under there, which looks a little bit ugly. I guess I'll change that out, although the whole thing is probably going to go. Um, so on the server as well, that being uh, play.sumavoid.com, I also uh, put down these levers and was able to face them in a particular direction when I place them down. That might be a spigot thing, but in vanilla, like you've got one facing that way, so you want this one to then face that way so it looks um, normal, but as you can see, you can't do that. It chooses its own way. So anyway, you can sort of block off some of the interaction. Um, I don't have an item that I can really put on there to enchant, do I? Flint and steel can't be enchanted, <laughs> uh, but you can put unbreaking on it. Anyway, so you can remove a group of three on either side. You can remove one there, another one here, and I think if you remove these ones and one of those, it gets you to silk touch level on here, which is probably the most um, important. No, sorry, not silk touch, feather falling. Um, and yeah, and then you can hit that in the in the corner there, and it lifts up all three. Now that's got a little bit of redstone above it. You could also just put it on the side of that bookshelf and it would also pick up all three. And yeah, I'm just not terribly impressed with it. It doesn't look great, <laughs> doesn't really do a lot on the redstone front. I'm going to wait until I get some more inspiration and come back to that. Um, as for the next two projects, this one over here is progressing. We're going to build the little villager sorter in a moment. I've got a design for that, something pretty straightforward. And this room is going to look great when it's done, believe me. As of right now, it looks a little bit too grey, probably because we're going to go andesite on the inside. Uh, inside and originally I pictured using something really colourful like some acacia wood or maybe even some spruce wood in there as well and as I was playing around with different combination of materials I just found that you had to really stick with one for the size of this room so this is going to consist of two segments we're going to have one over there and one over here and uh, you're going to be able to let's say it's going to look like this by default going all the way across like we'll have bookshelves with the andesite at the top and then when you want to uh, trade with the villager, you'll be able to open up all of them at once. So there'll be a button at the back of the room. It'll activate some redstone, which is going to, with pistons, it's going to push up and then pull down again. So we'll have a sticky piston here. And do I have like a spare lever? <laughs> of all those levers I was just using, I don't have a spare one. Let's craft some quickly. Do you know what? Levers are one of those things that you craft so often to use. You, if you keep all your items, you don't chuck them away, you'll end up with loads of them. Because it ain't worth going back up to the storage system to... Uh, yeah, to get them. So that's going to push all the blocks up like that. That's why there's an extra andesite block at the top. Then it's going to pull back down and we're going to be able to interact with the villager on the opposite side. Now this chap's going to be standing on a half slab which will be situated right where this lever is, I think. Yep, he's going to be standing there so no mob can spawn on this. It's going to be safe from zombies. And his head height is going to be a little bit lower, <laughs> as you can see mine is, I'm crouching here behind a little bookshelf. Um, and that means we could put a sign on the back of this block and read it as well um, by putting, I think you have to put it on the top line, or maybe you can see the whole of the sign. But anyway, when we open this thing, we're going to see loads of villages in a row, and they're going to have a sign behind them with the book that they have, and then we're going to be able to interact and, and trade with them. And a lot of this was modelled on the video uh, that Nembob MC made, and in his video... Um, you know, his room was too high, which made all of the redstone stuff really easy. It made putting the villagers um, here really easy as well. You could put the signs on the front of the bookshelves because all he did was have a sticky piston above to pull the bookshelves up. And because I wanted to make my room free high, it makes everything tricky. So we'll have a, a system down the bottom here that's going to push 
up the bookshelves, pull them back down, and then another one for closing it where we have um, just normal pistons facing down like this, and then you know they push everything back down again and, and close it, and so all the villagers will safely be stored behind. Now, when 1.9 comes out, there's going to be 27 trades in total, so I've made each segment here seven blocks across, and that means we've got more than enough room to have a group of villagers on this side, on this side, and then two more over there. And then that means we're sort of future-proofed for 1.9, and I think we'll have a few spaces left over for everything else beyond. So this means we're going for every single enchantment. That includes stuff like, you know, Bane of Arthropods. If we get a Bane of Arthropods 5 book, we'll put them into the system. If we get all the ones that we want, I'm probably not going to be a completionist and try and hunt down every single book. But it's going to be a fun project anyway. And so that's how the room is coming along now. I think what I want to do is make a fair bit more progress on this and start work on the uh, the villager sorting system around the side. So when I come back, this room should be a lot more developed and I'll have that thing to show you as well. I don't think I've seen anything quite like this before and as I start recording it kind of occurs to me there's probably just four zombies there which means a pack spawn. So I'm trying to wire up the redstone down below and there's not going to be any room for lighting so I go to get myself some glowstone as I believe you can put redstone on that. And uh, there's four zombies here when I get back. It's just the four isn't it? I thought there were like a whole group of them. Wow. So that shows you how well lit up this area is. And uh, yeah they just spawned while I was away. Didn't go very far. Yep, that's right. So the way this would work is we're going to have uh, repeaters on either side pointing into the pistons and a wire of redstone down the middle and then this room gets lit up by the glowstone and it's all one high actually. <laughs> and well, mobs don't spawn on glowstone and that's probably because of the lighting level or because of the type of block it is. Either way, I can never quite remember exactly what's what. Um, <laughs> so nothing would have spawned down here anyway, however if we didn't have the glowstone then they might be able to spawn in that space. Uh, but then we're talking about spiders, and then there's the repeaters to block them on either side. I don't know. I don't know, they probably wouldn't have spawned down here. <laughs> Doesn't even matter though. Alright, this segment right here is now finished, and didn't I say I'd do the trading thing next? Well, <laughs> uh, I'll do that next for sure this time. And I've got a feeling, by the way, that the jungle wood here is not that great on the side. I feel like I need to break it up or something. Not had any ideas for that yet. Anyway, that's going to go around the entire outside. It's going to come back over to here. And then I felt like we should have a little area for some anvils or something. So I was thinking of putting an anvil there. And that's about as far as that went because <laughs> uh, it doesn't look that great over here. Anyway, there's a button on the wall that you can press. So let's go and press it and bam. All of that happens right there. All those pistons firing. And it opens up and you can trade with the villagers. And that should be on both sides as well. And eventually when we build the other side it'll be for all four at once. Then when you press it again, it closes like that. Just like magic. <laughs> um, so the way that we've done that is... First of all we started off with a one tick pulse going into a piston. And then we move a redstone block back and forth. So that creates a T flip flop. Now when this gets powered, it's going to open because we create a two tick pulse that goes underneath and into the wiring I showed you a moment ago and then we press it the second time um, that will already be unpowered but this bit right here won't be so that will become unpowered and then this bit gets powered which powers all of the pistons and they're actually currently extended um, that shouldn't really mess anything up. It's probably a smarter idea to use a T flip flop so they push down and then retract again when they're done but Considering the way the redstone's done here, we can leave it like that. So that's the wiring. It'll be the same on the other side. I won't need to talk about it too much when that side is done. So now we will be doing the uh, villager sorting system. And when it comes to the amount of room for that, there's not really a lot between here and there. So it's pretty much going to be the width of this space right here that I'm going to build it in. And it will be in that space back there. So now that I've built this thing, I'm looking at it and thinking, oh man, this looks really, really bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, this project was fun to do, to put together, but it's kind of temporary as well. Or it's got that temporary look, you know. You could build this all up and make it look fancy, but I wasn't 100% sure about this design. I've also missed a block over here. And yeah, there was one of our rails that comes through here. This goes up to the top. It's from the witch farm. It sorts out all of the redstone and gunpowder. So I've got to reroute that a little bit. Uh, but this thing right here, not sure if I'll ever actually upgrade it to a proper system or if this will do for now because the villagers I don't think we're going to use them over and over again once we've got our books over here and this thing will be fine in the long run so you can kind of see what's going on right here actually what I wanted to do was add a powered rail just somewhere before um, we get to this bit those villagers are noisy 
very noisy. I should probably turn them down. Let's turn down our sound just a little bit for the moment and I'll explain how this works. So this could have been really nice and compact uh, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do that. I've got a ghost key at the moment here. I'm not pressing left or right even. Let's press that and make that disappear. Um, but unfortunately because of the way you've got to control the signal it means it needs to be a little bit messy. So anyway, we have a detector rail over here. When a uh, villager comes through, you can see they'll follow this. They'll power the detector rail. That'll power the redstone down below and turn off this torch, the equivalent of that happening right there. So the next one comes along and it goes straight over and into the second booth. Now when they're all in booths, we can say, nope, I don't want to trade with you and get rid of that person. Or we can trade with them a little bit and say, actually, you don't have the trades that we want and we can get rid of them. Or we can go, nope, I want to keep this one and send it on its way. And that bit actually gets a little bit tricky. You've got to make sure that there is a villager in each and every one of these or that you know they're all powered like this because when you send it on its way and this becomes unpowered you've got to make sure you've powered the lever here beforehand because otherwise it turns back. And that's why the signal flow is a little bit annoying because you needed the output from the detector rail to be manipulated by this lever. So let's say they're all turning to the left it means when it comes out you can nudge it all the way down here and then go and put it inside the system. Um, so that's how we're going to use it, and I've got a lot of trading ahead of me next, I guess. So we'll go in here and start taking these guys out. How many did I build in total? It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think. So all we've got to do is take out 7 of these chaps. Right, you've gone into the first one, that's a good sign. <laughs> do you go into the second one? Yes. So 5 more of these, and we should be good. 1, <laughs> if I knock it in there, there we go. 2, there's 3 and four, and I saw a librarian, and then number five, another librarian, excellent. So what we'll probably end up doing is going, ew, that doesn't look good. So what happens, ah, they're already facing the other way. I think, <laughs> I think that's not good, let's get out of here. Right, I think the problem is, where I've built it, they're already facing the wrong way, and I needed to have updated them. Yep, that seems to be exactly what's happened. And then at the end here, they've probably gone in and nudged one back out again. So you better have good trades. Let's send in two more then. We'll keep those other ones hanging around. And you'll see exactly how this is going to work. So in they go. <laughs> Into the correct slots. Now we're not going to be trading with any of these guys. So it's time to say see you later. Now this isn't going to nudge the minecart. They're all going to just take damage and die unfortunately. It's very cruel. I know. And you don't want to remove the minecarts until after as well, otherwise they might pop out and be able to move away. So there's a lot of manual stuff going on here, and that's because we're using minecarts. Most of the villager sorting systems uh, that I've done before and I've seen out there, you use water streams to control the villagers, and that makes things uh, a lot easier. But I wanted to do it with minecarts, just do something different this time. So I didn't even check if we had reset everything correctly, but it appears that we have. We've got room for... Another five, I think. So one, two, three, and there's four, five. And how many of these guys have we got left? Still got loads of them. Absolutely loads of them. So once again, we know who we're trading with. And I'm going to do this for a while until we get ourselves a whole bunch of uh, librarians. I think I sent one too many that time. I did, didn't I? As cruel as this is, it well and truly sounds hilarious. <laughs> Holidays. So I finished my round of trading. If you watched the last episode, at the end we kind of discussed how this works. And having done it with all of these in a row, it's basically a case of they all have like the similar sort of trade tree in the same order and you unlock them in the same order as well. So they all start off with this first trade. This one's NAF and then eventually you get to unlock the second one which tends to be a little bit better. However, as you'll see, this guy has Silk Touch. It can uh, it can be whatever. So we'll just go through and check all of these. I've, I've done it a moment ago. We've got some really good trades on one of these. Protection 3 is not bad until we get Protection 4. And I've got a feeling these won't take too long at all. Power 5 on that one and Aqua Infinity. So there's two books crossed off. Now, if we have a villager come through with two of the ones that we want, I want to essentially just get one villager for each trade. So we'll end up trying to get one of them twice. Um, so hopefully Aqua Infinity will be easy. What was the one there? I've skipped right past it twice now. Luck of the Sea. That goes up to level 3, so we don't want that. And Luck of the Sea too. Unfortunately, neither of those. Sharpness 5 right here. And I'm breaking free. That is the absolute trade at 13 emeralds. That's an absolute steal. 
Over here we've got Blast Protection and Infinity, another good book to get right there, also really cheap. And then this guy's got Punch 1 and Smite 3. So we definitely got some decent trades out of uh, that round. A couple of these will be getting rid of. I didn't really think about that when I came through here. And that was terrible use of English, getting rid of. That's not how you construct a sentence. Uh, this guy's got Fire Protection and Protection 3. I actually want to hold on to Protection 3 for the moment. Power 5, you're not going anywhere. Where was the one? This guy right here, just luck of the sea. So we're done trading with him. We've spent a minimal amount of uh, emeralds. What's his paper trade like? We do want to keep one with a low paper trade, but his is 35, which isn't very good at all. So it turns out I missed a step back there with the trade. You can trade one more time than I sort of showed you. Yeah, this little chap turned up in this back area, by the way. It's because some of these were breeding next to each other, I think. And uh, he's been wandering around there. <laughs> the little ones are adorable, aren't they? Uh, yeah, so there's this other trade at the end. Like, you can get a second book here. And then after that, you can get a name tag. That seems to be every single time. So I've got to trade with these a few more. And at the moment, I've sort of run out of emeralds. I've run out of sugarcane and things to trade with them. So that's going to be our objective, I guess, in the next few episodes. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've also got a couple of villagers hanging out down here. Anyway, let's go back round to the other side because what I want to show you now is this room. It's technically sort of finished. I've got to do the wiring on this side over here, uh, but then it's good to go. So this is how we're going to enter the room like that, and then it's going to shut behind us. This place looks lovely. <laughs> I do like it. And, uh, and then we can press the button over here and we can trade. Bam! And we got one trader here already. Now you can see it says Silk Touch and 14. That's because I put the price down. We had another guy trading Silk Touch for 16. So this one is obviously cheaper. And maybe we'll be able to find a cheaper one still. So in the future what we might do is swap these out for ones that have you know even cheaper ones after that. Uh, but there you go, it's coming along well and I've got a lot of in-betweeny work to do. <laughs> As I said, got to do the redstone wiring on this side, got to sort out how we're going to trade with these guys because I'm running low on materials to do so. So that may involve maybe trading with some other hermits or building some new farms. At the moment, I don't know what the plan is, but that's going to be it for this episode of Hermitcraft. Do hope you have enjoyed it and if you have, leave a like on the video, it's always appreciated, the support. And uh, of course, going to mention it again like I did last video. Go check out Kingdom if you haven't seen it already. Having an absolute blast playing that game. And it seems like a lot of you really, really liked it as well. Lots of tremendous feedback. So uh, it was good to see all of that. Anyway, as always, I'm babbling on a little bit here. So let's wrap things up. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.